My story is a story of a little girl, a little Jewish girl, who had to make three fateful choices that in a normal world, no child should never have had to make. My name is Judith Kleinman and I was born in Venice, Italy in 1938 and we moved to Milan three years later. I lived in Milan with my mother, Anna, and my grandmother, Leah. After uh, my father disappeared, my father Misha. My mother worked during the day and when she came home in the afternoon, she always ran to me and I ran to her. We clung to each other and I never left her side. I was very attached to my mother and there was a strong, special bond between us. My mother used to play with me. My mother used to read me stories and fairy tales, and my mother always answered all my questions. Although there was a war going on and my father was gone, I was a carefree little girl. On October 30th, 1922, with the fascist rise to power in Italy, Benito Mussolini was appointed prime minister, and Italy became a totalitarian state. After the Italian invasion of Ethiopia in October 1935, Italy grew closer to Nazi Germany. These close ties gained momentum as Italy and Germany sided with the fascists in the Spanish Civil War. On October 25, 1936, an agreement was signed between fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, which became known as the Axis countries. On September 27, 1940, Japan joined this alliance. The number of Italian Jews in the interwar period was approximately 40,000 and included immigrants and refugees. In the early years, the fascist totalitarian regime chose not to persecute the Jews. In the summer of 1938, racist anti-Semitic legislation was enacted under the direction and will of Mussolini. From 1938 to 1943, a series of laws was enacted that stripped the Jews of many of their rights, removed them from public life, and created a barrier between them and the rest of Italian society. Throughout this period, these restrictions steadily increased and affected all areas of daily life. In the summer of 1943, after the removal of Mussolini from power and the signing of the armistice with the Allies, Germany invaded Italy and occupied the north and center of the country. Southern Italy was liberated by the Allies. Germany released Mussolini, who reinstated his regime. Mussolini's Salo Republic radicalized its anti-Semitic policies and deepened cooperation with Nazi Germany. During this period, an extensive manhunt for Jews was conducted throughout the country, with both the Germans and Italians taking part. Jews who were captured were transferred to concentration camps in Italy and from there deported, mostly to Auschwitz. One day in uh, January 1944, my happy childhood came to an end. It all began when my mother was called to the public phone, which was at the entrance to our building. She went downstairs, and I, as usual, followed her. I couldn't hear what she said, because she whispered into the phone. But when she put down the phone, I saw that she was pale. I asked, Mama, why are you pale? What happened to you? But my mother didn't answer me. She went quickly upstairs, and she and grandmother packed in a hurry two suitcases. I asked, Mama, where are we going? But again, my mother didn't answer me. And I felt, I sensed that something terrible was going to happen. My mama and my nonna took the two suitcases and I took my doll, Angelica, and I embraced her to, to me. We went in silence. After a long walk, 
we reached a big building. Inside a room stood a Nazi by his desk. He ordered my mother and grandmother to sit on a bench that was in that room. To my surprise, I saw there our Christian neighbor, who also sat down on that bench next to my mother. The Nazi told me to stand by his side. Then he asked me in a regular voice, what is your name? I said, Judita. He asked, with whom do you want to go, Judita? I knew I had to answer right away, and I looked at my mother. But I didn't recognize my mother for a minute. She looked so different, so strange. She looked as if she had a white mask on her face. And her eyes, that always looked at me with love, looked at me as if they said, Danger, don't choose me. I didn't understand why, but I pointed at the Christian neighbor. At that minute, the Nazi shouted something and two soldiers came in. They grabbed my grandmother by her shoulders and pushed her out of the room. Then they went towards my mother. When I realized that she too would soon disappear, I ran to her. But when I almost reached her, the Nazi caught me and held me tight. My mother stretched out, out her arms to me, but the Nazi drew me back. My mother opened her mouth to say something to me, but no word, no sound came out. I cried, Mama, Mama, but they brutally pushed her out of the room. I stood by the empty bench and I knew I was alone. Suddenly, uh, the Christian neighbor came to me, held my hand and took me out of that room. She told me that she couldn't keep me because she was poor and had five girls of herself, but she would bring me to a place where I will be taken care of. And she brought me to a convent. Mother Superior waited for us at the gate. She smiled at me and she asked me for my name and age. I told her and uh, I said, my name is Judita and I don't want to be here. I want to go home. Mother Superior said, don't worry, Judita. Here you will be protected. We will take care of you. The Nazis won't find you. Then she told me that I was the only Jewish girl in the convent and all the others were Christians and that I wasn't to tell anyone that I was Jewish. I kept it a secret for a long time. As the months passed by, I became friendly with three little girls who were also my age. And uh, I told myself, because the, the, the secret was very heavy for me to carry, I told myself that I could share my uh, secret with my friends because they would never harm me. So one day when we uh, were in the in the playground outside, I told them that I was Jewish. While I was telling them, one of the girls passed by behind me. She was one of the big girls. And she must have overheard me because she came to me and said, Judita, you are not a Jew and I can prove it to you. I asked her how, and she told me to show her my belly button. I did, and she said, your belly button is pressed in, like in all Christians. In Jews, the belly button sticks out. Look for yourself. Yours doesn't stick out. I looked, and it didn't stick out. But I wasn't quite sure, and I told her that uh, I wanted to check all the girls' belly buttons by myself. She agreed that we would both check them. So when the nuns went to pray in the afternoon, she gathered all the girls, stood them in two long lines, 
and we did the review of all the belly buttons. I passed from one to the other with Marcello behind me, and uh, I was very disappointed to find out that they all had their belly buttons pressed in. Marcella said, girls, we always uh, doubted, we had doubts whether Judita was a Jew or a Christian, but now we have a proof that Judita is a Christian. She is not a Jew. I was very confused because I knew I was a Jew and I couldn't uh, find out how come I had a, a Christian belly button instead of a Jewish one. One day, while we were uh, studying in, the, in our room, in the second floor, we heard shouts from the yard. We ran to the windows to look down what happened. And we saw uh, two men in, in, un in uniforms, one was in black and one was in brown, and they uh, shouted at us, do you have Jewish girls there? So I moved away from the window because I was afraid. And uh, luckily, uh, the sister who stood uh, behind me pushed me back to the window and shouted at them, in our convent, we don't keep Jewish girls. And then she told all the girls to sit in their places. But I couldn't move. Only with difficulty, I, I said one word, grazie. And she said, you don't have to thank me. You have to thank Jesus. He is the one that saved you. And Mother Superior said, uh, uh, look, uh, Judita, from now on, we will call you Dita, not Judita. And uh, we will have to take much better care of you than uh, we did. That night in bed, I told myself that um, if they don't let me be a Jew, or even one person, then uh, I will be two girls instead of one. During the day, they w I will be the Christian girl and they will call me Dita. And I will tell to myself every night, I am a Jew and my name is Judita. And uh, in, this, uh, in this way, no one will be angry at me because uh, Jesus will be happy and Mother Superior and all the, the nuns that I am a Christian. And, uh, and God and uh, my mother and my grandmother will be happy that I am a Jew. And because they will be happy, they will bring me back my mama. Out of approximately 30,000 Jews from Italy who didn't manage to flee the country, some 8,000 were sent to extermination camps. Only some 900 returned. In April 1945, the final assault of the Allies on the German and Italian forces in northern Italy began. On May 2nd, they formally surrendered. Mussolini was captured by Italian partisans who executed him. After the war, Italy turned out to be an important stop for many survivors on their way to pre-state Israel. With the arrival of the Jewish Brigade of the British Army in Italy, they began searching for Jewish children in convents in order to bring them back into the fold of the Jewish community. About uh, one month after the war, in uh, 1945, in May, I was sure that now my mother will come back to me and my grandmother because the war ended and there was no reason that she won't come. So every day I went to the gate and I looked out in the hope of seeing my mother coming for me and taking me home. A few days after that, uh, a girl came running to me and said, you have guests, go quickly to Mother Superior. A man and a woman have come for you. And I was sure that it was my mother and father. So I ran quickly and I opened the, the door without waiting. And I was very disappointed that I saw two strangers, a man and a, and a woman. And the man came to me, they shook my hand and said, uh, Shalom, I am Tzvika, a soldier of the Jewish Brigade, and this is Leah from Eretz Israel. And he said, uh, we are Jewish. Uh, do you know that you are a Jew too? I said, yes. 
He said, uh, because you are a Jew, we want to take you out of here, of the convent, because it is a Christian convent, and bring you to Eretz Israel. And I didn't know anything about Eretz Israel then, and I didn't want to be dragged out again. And I said, uh, I won't go, no one will take me. And Mother Superior said, I told you that she won't go with you. And they said, uh, you did. Uh, you are not a Christian. So you have to be and uh, live with the people that, um, that you belong to. And uh, Mother Superior said, uh, Dita, you are very dear to me. I don't want you to go. Jesus saved you. Under his protection, you are safe. And Leah said, uh, she doesn't belong to you. She was only put in your custody. And Leah came to me and she kneeled down and looked me straight in the eyes and said, uh, you did. You're seven years old. You are a big girl already. So you have to understand, here in the convent, you found a temporary uh, shelter. Now that the war is over, we are going to all the convents and taking out all the Jewish children and bringing them to Eretz Israel. Your place is, is not here in Italy, it's there in Eretz Israel. Mother Superior said to me, Dita, you have to make a very difficult decision. Go to the little room and think over where you want to be. After half an hour, we will call you and you will tell us what you have decided. I went upstairs and I was very confused. I didn't know what to do. On the one hand, I was used to being in, uh, in the convent. I, I was there a year and a half already. I had four girls that were good friends of mine. I had two nuns that liked me and Mother Superior that loved me. And then I said to myself, Leah said that all, all the Jews are going now to, to Eretz Israel. That means that my mother and grandmother are also there. Yes, I will go with them. So just then a girl came and told me to go to Mother Superior, to the room. And when I entered the room, the three of them looked at me in expectation. And when I said, uh, I will go with the Jews, uh, Mother Superior became pale and she asked me, dear child, are you sure? And I said, yes, Mother. And uh, Tzvika and Leah smiled, a big smile. They were very happy. Then uh, Mother Superior told uh, the nun one of the nuns to bring the girls and to bring uh, also my... I had very little things, stuff that belonged to me. And then when the girls arrived, she told all the girls and nuns that uh, I'm going to the land of the Jews to, because I'm a Jew, I'm not a Christian, and uh, we have to say goodbye. And all the, my friends cried, and I also I tried uh, not to cry and I said shalom to all and uh, I gave uh, my hands to Tzvika and Leah and we went toward the gate. As I arrived in the gate, I suddenly turned around, ran to Mother Superior and embraced her. She took off her, her uh, chain with the cross, put it around my neck, it was very heavy. Uh, kissed me on my forehead and said, Judita, Jesus will protect you. Yehudit was moved to a gathering area for Jewish children and then taken to the children's home at Silvino under the direction of Moshe Ze'iri, a soldier in the Jewish Brigade of the British Army, attached to the Solel Bonnet Company. In Silvino, children were reconnected with their Jewish heritage. They celebrated the Sabbath and the Jewish festivals, learned Hebrew, and prepared for their new life in Israel.
At Salvino, many of the children rediscovered a sense of home, youthful kinship, intellectual interest and curiosity, and hope for a new life. A few months later, in November 1945, Yehudit moved to pre-state Israel. Yehudit was sent to the Hatchia Institution of the Zionist Religious Youth Aliyah Movement in Petach Tikva. Here, there were children and young survivors. We were there about 68 children from seven uh, different European countries. And I told myself, as I sat on my new bed, that now is the time in the land of the Jews, I have to find out once and for all what kind of belly button Jewish girls have. So I entered the bathroom fully dressed and I leaned on the, on the door and counted all the belly buttons. And uh, I was very happy to find out that they all had belly buttons that were pressed in. A year later, one of the boys uh, suggested that we all tell the others what we did and how we felt on our first day in the boarding home. So we sat on the ground in a big circle, 38, uh, 68 uh, children. And when my turn came, I told them the story of my belly button. They all laughed and one big girl rose, took a stick, came to me, patted me lightly on my shoulder three times and said, by this, I declare you a kosher Jew. Uh, one day, uh, when I was about 10 years old, I received a, a letter and a package from my aunt in England. And uh, I asked her if she knows what happened to my mother, to my father, and to my grandmother. So uh, she, she ignored me. She told me many other things. She didn't want to tell me. So when I became 12 years old, I told, she asked me what I want for bat mitzvah. And I said, I only want you to tell me the truth. What happened to my mother and grandmother and father? So she said about my father that my father disappeared and was never found again and my mother and my grandmother were deported to Auschwitz and perished there. And I was very angry and I said, this aunt doesn't know anything, they are not dead. And uh, I couldn't accept it. Actually, they were dead a week after they arrived. And it was written the 30 of January, 44. After this institution was closed, the children were transferred to Kval Batya, a youth village established after World War II for child Holocaust survivors. At the age of 12, she went to live with her aunt Margaret in Haifa. Yehudit served in the army, studied teaching, and was a teacher for many years. She married and is a mother. I missed my mother most, first of all, when I gave uh, birth to my children, with each child. And I was very sorry for my mother that she didn't get to see her grandchildren. Actually, I was one of those who didn't tell anything for years. One day, one morning, when uh, the children had uh, breakfast and uh, my daughter was still in her room. She hung up uh, two dresses that we bought for her uh, the day before. One was yellow, one was blue, and she had tears of frustration in her eyes because she couldn't decide which dress to wear for her uh, kindergarten. And uh, I was amazed seeing her, uh, you know, so, so touched by uh, such a simple uh, choice. And then all of a sudden I saw myself exactly at her age, having to choose not between uh, two dresses, but between my mother and the Christian neighbor. And I said to myself, it was so horrible. How, 
because I repressed it, I, I, so I didn't uh, think about it uh, before. The first thing I did, I brought her to her kindergarten, and when I came back, I, I went and bought many copy books, children's copy books, and started writing everything that happened to me. It all came up because of the, such a tribal uh, decision. And that's how I wrote my book, and that's how I started talking and coming to Yad Vashem, and on and on. Over the years, Yehudit has told her story to young men and women, military officers, students, and adults. 